Hello parents and welcome to Advocates for Angels Monday Facebook Live. I'm Valerie Abrahamian, the IEP Navigator, and I help parents get the IEP their child needs to thrive both in school and in life after high school. And today's Facebook Live is entitled, If We Lose Our Kids, We Lose the Country. Why isn't the news talking about the decline of our children's mental health and dramatic increase of student suicide rates. So suicide rates have increased by 50% for students in special education, uh, more dramatically over the past three months, but they started increasing uh, upon the school closures back in March and have consistency, uh, have the trajectory of increasing to now we're seeing an alarming rate of kiddos actually completing their suicide attempts and uh, a huge increase in kids uh, increase in their suicide ide ideology as well as their mental health uh, is declining uh, to the point where kids are having to be hospitalized in psychiatric hospitals placed on heavy medication uh, increase in self-harm such as cutting and uh, other self-harming uh, uh, behaviors and it, it is a, a huge problem and uh, parents really don't know how to help their kids what to do and school districts are failing to address these issues and as I'll talk about today school districts are accountable obligated and have the duty to uh, take immediate action whenever a child uh, has any kind of suicidal ideology or starts uh, talking in this manner, or when you see a child becoming depressed and uh, at risk of, of suicide. So parents need to assess the emotional and academic harms caused by distance learning and work with their IEP teams to remedy in moving forward and how to help their child. Because IDEA, once a parent brings this to an IEP team's attention, IDEA, uh, certain uh, aspects of IDEA is triggered immediately when a, when a parent tells the, or informs their IEP team that their child is self-harming or their child's uh, talking about suicide, uh, it immediately triggers uh, protections and safeguards in IDEA. But many parents don't know this and many school districts aren't implementing these safeguards and protections. Not only do students need to learn to return, students need to return to the classroom, but school districts need to improve distance learning, and we have a whole lot of work to do. So the National Center for Special Education, and the acronym is NCSER, the National Center for Special Education Research, states Students with special needs and disabilities face stark challenges amidst the COVID crisis. Without reliable in-person professional support for these students, and because online learning tools and services largely have not been designed with special education in mind, these students and their families are facing unprecedented and significant challenges and risk. The research in special education programs, which is administered by the National Center for Special Education Research, search, NCSER, supports rigorous research that aims to improve a range of education outcomes for students with or at risk for disabilities. Funding was cut $20 million in the fiscal year of 2012 and has not been reinstated to date. Restoring this funding would help education respond to the specific and substantial challenges for special education through the COVID crisis and its fallout, and will help improve support and opportunities for students with disabilities well into the future as education increasingly uses digital technology. So today, our new relief bill framework includes $82 billion for education. But will school districts actually use these funds to improve distance learning and address 
the extreme uh, regression of kiddos in special education. They've already received billions back in March and April, and our kids continue to decline both emotionally and academically. We've been in distance learning now for 10 months, yet school districts continue to fail to meet the needs of students on an IEP. So I'm gonna go over some red flags that parents can be aware of. And if your child is exhibiting any of these red flags, I highly recommend that you take action now in uh, going, uh, making a doctor's appointment for your, doc for your child as well as calling an IEP meeting to uh, alert uh, your IEP team so that those triggers in IDEA can go into effect. So this morning, uh, I had an IEP meeting for one of my clients and we reviewed the BASC, B-A-S-C. It is a questionnaire that is given to uh, teachers as well as parents uh, regarding the child's behavior. So in that BASC, they have questions that uh, talk about uh, these red flags that will uh, uh, alert parents and school district uh, educators and, and administrators and service providers that, hey, this kid has some uh, serious red flags regarding their emotional well-being as well as their mental health. And that is when they should start taking action and doing certain things required by state law, state and federal law. So this uh, student showed these areas of red flags. So uh, he was found to lose control when he becomes angry. He threatens to hurt others. He says, I hate myself. He says, I want to die or I wish I were dead. He says, I want to kill myself. He says, uh, and then uh, frequently he harms himself and others. So the team simply just had no response to these very alarming findings. Uh, the psychologist stated that the parents should look into insurance opportunities for the provision of mental health services to address these concerns. And the IEP team simply just disregarded these, the, all these uh, red flags and they just expected the parents to take care of it. So uh, I immediately requested an ERMS assessment, which stands for an Educationally Related Mental Health Service Assessment to determine the eligibility for counseling for that child. And uh, this is the right of every parent to request an ERMS assessment when you feel your child's mental health is at risk. And also, uh, what el the other thing that immediately should go into effect if it already has not been done is an FBA sh assessment should also be conducted, FBA standing for Functional Behavior Assessment, and a BIP, a Behavior Intervention Plan or Behavior Support Plan should also be developed uh, with goals written to monitor the mental health of that child and the behavior of that child when it comes to anything like self-harm, uh, harming others, uh, disruption in the classroom or disruption or, that in, or uh, behaviors that impede that child's ability to access their learning and the curriculum. And uh, uh, for sure, those things, parents, uh, you have the right to request when any, th any of these red flags are shown for your child. So that's what we did in this IEP this morning. Now, uh, the parents are also gonna take their uh, child to the doctor and look into counseling as well through their uh, doctor. Now, I wanna give a little tip here, parents. If you uh, do go to the doctor and your doctor has uh, diagnosed with your child with a uh, any kind of uh, anxiety disorder, emotional disturbance, uh, depression, suicidal ideology, any of those things, make sure that you have your doctor write a letter uh, to the school district so that that will become very strong evidence uh, to add to your IEP in order for them to uh, take into consideration when they're developing and conducting their assessments. So uh, last week I had another IEP meeting for another one of my clients 
And again, we had a triennial IEP was being conducted and we had an IEE for a neuropsych assessment. Again, an IEE stands for an independent educational evaluation. So that's done outside through a private provider, not by the school district. So this IEE neuropsychologist warned the school district that they will be held liable if this student commits suicide. So this student uh, has uh, uh, well made it well very known that she has plans to commit suicide. She has it written down. She knows exactly what she's gonna do. She's informed everyone. She's informed her mother. Uh, the school district is well aware of it. Uh, his report also indicated uh, this student was at a very high risk for suicide. And it's all in, it was all in his report. It also came out in all of the testing results uh, and the subtests that he took regarding her um, uh, mental health and uh, social emotional status. Uh, the parents also informed the IEP team that she would hold each person on that IEP team liable through a civil lawsuit if her child completed her suicide plans. Now, to top it off, uh, this family had suicide uh, um, experiences uh, in their family in a direct relation to that child. Uh, three other members of that family had already have already committed suicide. So uh, this uh, child is well aware of suicide and uh, how to do it because uh, she's seen it happen within her family. Yet, the IEP team responded with their typical scripted response that they memorize where they say that they are going to follow the IEP process and after the IEP process is completed then they would address the concerns of the parent and the recommendations of the IEE neuropsychologist. Now what is that IEP process? So that, that means that when you have a triennial assessment the order and the agenda in which the triennial assessment goes is that the first order of agenda is you review the assessment findings. So you review all the reports that uh, are included in that triennial. Then after the reports are completed, you would go through the rest of the IEP, which would be the uh, old goals, the progress on the old goals. Then you would look at the present levels of academic performance. Then you would look at the offer, district's offer of the new goals for the new school year. Then you would look at the accommodations written in the child's IEP. Then you would determine the services for the child. And then you would determine the placement for the child. And they wanted the parent to wait until we went through that process, which could take another month, even two months, to get through that process until they addressed this very serious concern of this child possibly committing suicide, which is absolutely ridiculous and insane really that they would just brush off such a serious uh, situation in this child's life that an IEE neuropsych neuropsychologist been doing this for 40, over 40 years, uh, a veteran in his field uh, uh, warning the school district of their liability if this child completes her suicide plan. Uh, yet that is what the IEP team did. Uh, so I am going to be filing a compliance complaint. Uh, so these uh, the parents and school districts must work together to address these red flags before it's too late. Districts are obligated to take action by implementing the mental health and behavior provisions listed in IDEA. And the other question I have is why aren't our news stations reporting on these stories? Last week, a sixth grader shot himself in the head on a classroom Zoom call, yet it was only reported on that uh, local news in that student's uh, local uh, neighborhood area, So, which is shocking. Uh, there are hundreds of other heartbreaking stories of kids being placed in psychiatric hospitals and prescribed heavy doses of medication due to the school closures and uh, the uh, isolation that our children are experiencing right now in, in, with the uh, pandemic. Our nation is failing our kids 
by not reporting on the alarming increase in suicide and mental health decline into depression and the need for medication and self-harm. Education is obligated to offer a remedy that helps rather than harms our most vulnerable children. So parents, I highly recommend that you get the help you need from an advocate so that you can be sure to hold your local school district accountable to provide the supports your child is entitled to under IDEA. And if your child is exhibiting any of these red flags that I talked about today, please make sure you see your doctor and get the help your child needs. So that's my Facebook Live for today, parents. Uh, please like and share this uh, video so that other parents who are looking for help with this uh, very heartbreaking situation can uh, get some tips on how they can help their child and hold their local school district accountable to meeting the needs of their child uh, as we continue to move through the pandemic and the school closures and us being really shut down uh, in our lives and continue the isolation. So parents, uh, thank you and God bless and I will see you next week on my next Facebook Live.